Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. Today we will present you a basic tutorial in which we will show you how to model a cantilever beam and perform a static analysis on it utilizing beam type elements. To begin with we need our ANSYS instance opened and the first thing we'll have to do is create a geometry. We'll go to the preprocessor, modeling, create, key points and here you have a series of options. We're going to choose to do an inactive um, coordinate system. The active coordinate system, you have it here, it says this, the coordinate system activated is equal to zero, and zero equals to the de default coordinate system that ANSYS has, that you can see it here in the, in the black region of the monitor. So we're going to go into active CS. Here you have the number of key points is one. The location of it is 0, 0, 0 for the first key point. We're going to hit apply. And then for the second key point, we're going to select a meter on the x, x axis and 0, 0 on the other two. Uh, ANSYS doesn't have units, ANSYS works on whatever unit you introduce them. So this meter could be inches, it could be feet, it could be millimeters. The only thing that you have to remember is. Keep in mind that if you define something as meters, everything has to be related to that meter unit. If you define something in inches, everything that you define has to be has to be related to that unit, so on and so on. So right now we're gonna have okay. And you do that as soon as you do that, you can see there's one key point here and one key point here. So the next thing is to create a line between those two key points. So we'll, we go to create lines, lines, straight line, and we select one and two key points. Okay. As soon as you do that, you'll see that you have the, your key points and your line. If you click on this isometric view here, you can see the key points you lost line. You can go to plot lines and you'll see the lines. And there's a little trick for you. If you go to plot control numbering, then you select key points, you put colors and numbers and you hit OK, you'll see the numbers of the key points and your beam. You'll see the numbers of all the key points. So now we have our model created. And next thing and the next thing we have to do is define the element types, the material properties, and the section and other properties. So the element type, we go to add, delete, delete, add. And as, as you know, there's different element types. For now, we're going to use the beam to know 188 and hit OK. Then we have the type 188 here. We hit close. We have the element type. We don't need real constants for this element type. Depending on your element type, you might need, uh, you might need constants. For now, for now, right now, we're going to go to material properties. And then we're going to define the material model. <coughs> Here we're going to go to a structural, linear, elastic, isotropic material. So this is the Young's modulus 2.1 E11 because we're working in meters. And PRXY is the Poisson coefficient 0 0.3. We're going to hit OK. And additionally, we're going to put the density. And the density, we're going to put a steel density, 7,800 kilograms per square meter. OK. Then we close this window. We have the material one defined. And the next step is to go and create a section. Sections, we got a beam, common sections. And here we have the ID number of section. That's the number of section we're going to define. The name, we're going to call it test test tube. And this, under the subtype, you have a lot of different section types. This is a very useful and ANSYS provides this capability. We're going to choose among these a tubular section. And we're going to say that the external, we're going to, you got to put in accordance to this, the drawing, the external radius and the internal radius. So this end means the number of cells around the circumference. It's by default A, so we're not going to touch it. So let's say we want our tube of 
40 millimeters on the outside and with a, with a wall of 2 millimeters thickness so we can just put 40 divided by a thousand which is 40 millimeters because we're working in meters so 40, ha 40 millimeters have to be transformed into meters and down here we're gonna say 30 let's say 3 millimeters thickness 37 oh they're, they're the opposite way sorry 37 divided by a thousand and here we have 40 divided by a thousand we can go and click preview and on the on this thing is going to show us the section that we have created this is very good if you don't know exactly how you've been how you've been interested in your values or to be sure if what you have been doing is right so here we have a section that's from minus 0 0.4 to 0 0.4 so it's 80 in diameter and 37 by 2 in the inside diameter so we're gonna go and hit ok now we go to plot and lines again so at this moment we have the element type we have the material properties we have the section the only thing that we have to do is obtain the mesh model first of all we never said that this line had some attributes so to do that in order to do that we go and push mesh attributes we go to picked lines we select this line click zero click ok sorry and it's gonna ask us the attitudes the, the attributes of this pick line are the material number is one the real constant we don't have any so none defined the beam the the element type number is one and the section is test tube that we selected we can pick up the orientation key point which is not the case right now so we're just gonna hit ok once you have done that you have the properties of this beam now what we have to do is actually mesh it there's two options you can use the mesh tool or just go to mesh and click on lines and select line i'm going to show you how to do it with the mesh tool when you click on the mesh tool this <coughs> tool op opens on the right and then you can select what you want to mesh in our situation is lines and then we're going to hit mesh select this line hit ok and now we know we have this we have the, the mesh models in order to verify you can go and list and list nodes and elements for example let's list nodes okay and you have the nodes that you didn't have before or you can list elements nodes plus added attributes and you see that you have three elements with this material this type of elements this section this is the real constant and what nodes are they defined through so so after you have the mail the mo your model has, has been matched you can actually simulate y y the model so in order to do that right now we're gonna go and go to loads the analysis type is going to be new analysis 8 we can close this model to static analysis under define loads we're going to go to apply structural displacement on key points this is going to be for the embedment we're going to embed our cantilever beam on one end apply that ok and we want to restrain all of the degrees of freedom which are displacements and rotations in order to do that we select all the degrees of freedom and put the value zero you will see these graphics which means that point has been embedded and each one corresponds to each direction each direction so now we want to apply a force at the end go of a hundred newton so we're gonna do force a moment on key points we're gonna put on this key point and hit ok and we want a force along the y direction and we're gonna select it and put a hundred the force is gonna be looking upwards because the 
of the system it goes in accordance to the system you can change the direction if you want to I'm just gonna keep it that way right now to just keep it simple we're not gonna define a uh, gravitational acceleration so we're just gonna go to solve this model you go to solutions for that the analysis type we have defined it we define the load so we can just go to solve and current ls I give you this message okay and as soon as you hit okay the computer will think and then you have this message that says the solution is done you hit close close so now your solution has been done but you have to check your results so you go to general Prowse processing you can read results last set in this situation and then we go to plot results contour plot null solution and we're gonna select the degree of freedom let's say the displacement vector summation and there you go you have these colors that represent the different displacements of the beam along the beam when you are interpreting this data be careful because they these results will be related to the system that you used so in our situation these are meters there's a very small displacement of our beam okay so i'm gonna show you a trick because the beam looking like this is not too interesting you can go to plot controls you uh, style size and shape and you can activate this e shape uh, option display of element hit ok and you will see your beam the way you define it with its proper section now i'm going to show you again we're going to go to nodal solution and we're going to plot the stress and we're going to go to von Mises stress and as you can see here we have the stresses in this situation they're pascals they're very small but you can see the stresses on the beam if you go to this dynamic model mode you can actually start rotating and looking at your model it's pretty easy and it helps a lot to interpret data and look at stuff you can see that the beam is bent and so now you know how to perform a simulation of a cantilever beam using ANSYS so for right now I'm gonna stop here I we would like to thank you for your attention and we hope uh, you enjoyed this presentation for more tutorials please visit our community and follow us on the social networks